Well, good morning on this first first day of July. Um, it's good to be with you this morning. I hope you had a good night's rest and you're ready to see what the Lord has in store for us today. I'm reminded every day that we, we really have no idea what is in store for us that day, whether it's um, plans that we have that could be thwarted or changed, whether it's things that we didn't expect would come our way. And I think that's why it's so important for us to, to yield to the Lord every morning and every day and, and just trust Him in our day's events, that He is a sovereign God and He is in absolute control of our lives and everything in it. And we can trust Him in that. And as I was thinking about that this morning, my prayer really was the song that we're going to sing together this morning. It's an old hymn that uh, unfortunately is been kind of labeled as an altar call hymn, but I really think it's a great prayer that we could pray every day, and especially this morning, if you'll just sing along with me or pray in your heart along with me, uh, have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way.
Christ only always living in me. <laughs> I love that last phrase. Fill with thy spirit till all shall see Christ only always living in me. And the hymn writer reminds us that it's Christ living his life through us, not us trying to live his life. If that makes sense. Paul said in Galatians 2.20, one of my favorite verses I've been crucified with Christ, therefore I no longer live. But the life I live in this body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And a Christian life is uh, yielding to his lordship in our life and allowing him to live his life through us. It relieves all the pressure from us, right? Uh, when we try to live the Christian life, we can fall into doing that by the flesh. And the flesh always yields flesh, but if we allow him to live his life through us, he's glorified and magnified. And of course, that's by the power of the Holy Spirit. Well, this morning we begin Ephesians chapter 6, and we're going to look at the first four verses. And um, all of this context, where we looked last week, wives and husbands, and here we're going to look at children and their parents and uh, on Tuesday of next week, we won't be having daily devotion on Monday. That's a holiday for us here in the office, so I won't be in on Monday. Uh, but we're going to see in the workplace also, there's this, uh, this command of living the Christian life in light of all of the theology that Paul lays out for us in the, third, in the first three chapters of how do we implement uh, this theology, Christ living in us. And this section that we're looking at now has everything to do with us being submissive and being, uh, being under authority that God has placed over us in our lives. The Bible is very clear that there's no authority that has been placed over us that God does not allow and that God does not set up, um, even whether it's good authority or bad authority. But the call for us as believers is to exemplify Christ's life through us um, under that authority, regardless of whether it's a good situation or a bad situation. And so here he exhorts children in the first verse. He says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Now, that word obey uh, is translated in many uh, translations as honor. And, and that word honor just means to have a fear or a reverence for, uh, recognizing their authority in our lives. And so we're to honor the synonym of that or the opposite of that would be to have disdain or to despise. And so here he's telling us as children, and regardless of what age we are at, whether we are a child or whether we are an adult, and our parents are still living, he tells us to honor them. Notice he doesn't put a condition here of, of whether they're a good parent or a bad parent. But he says, honor your parents, obey your parents. He goes on to say, honor your mother and your father, for this is the first command with a promise, that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. And so there's a promise attached to this, that when we honor our parents, he says that it will go well with us. And... Um, some of us had, had great parents. Uh, some of you may not have had great parents. Some of you may not even know who your biological parent was. Um, but here he says, regardless of what type of parent, honor. Um, I, I asked Sandy permission to share this. Uh, Sandy uh, grew up in a, in a very dysfunctional home, and um, her father... Uh, who just passed away, I think, two years ago now, three years ago, um, wasn't the best father in the world. He was a loving man. He was a jovial man. I enjoyed his company immensely. Uh, but Sandy, her dad, um, he, 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 he loved other women uh, other than her mom. And at a very young age, or a young age, he actually fathered a child, uh, why he was so married to his uh, to Sandy's mother, and as a consequence of of his life, Sandy uh, was set up to make some decisions uh, on her own that were harmful to her life, 
And she shares a story that uh, when she became a young adult, she went to a counselor and the counselor had given her counsel that she needs to write her dad a letter and just blast him uh, for all of the things that he did that harmed her and caused her a lot of emotional um, stress and, and some mistakes and decisions she made in her own life to lay all of the blame on him. Well, there was something that told Sandy, you know, this isn't this isn't the right thing to do. This isn't uh, the proper thing to do. And this was while Sandy was still not saved. And later, some years later, after she and I came to Christ, um, the Lord uh, led her by the power of the Holy Spirit to be able to forgive her dad and to release him of all of that. The beauty of this story is, is that when she did that, her father came uh, and visited church with us one Sunday, early on in our salvation, we were saved. And as a result of that, I think at the age of 64, I think is correct, her dad responded to the gospel and trusted Christ and was born again and lived out the rest of his life. He passed away in his 90s uh, in a repented state, uh, recognizing that he had sinned against God. And the beauty of it was that that he and Sandy were reconciled. And so for Sandy in that, at his passing, there wasn't this um, this resentment, this, this pain, because the Lord had taken all of that and healed her. You may have a similar story, um, but no matter how old you are and whether or not your parents are still living or not, if there was harm or hurt caused there, allow the Holy Spirit to feel that. Uh, to heal that and be reconciled in your heart to uh, to your parents, to honor your parents. And so he goes on to say, uh, now addressing the fathers, he says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. And so here again, while he's speaking to fathers, he's recognizing here the father has the spiritual headship or role in the family but it would apply to both fathers and mothers in parenting and giving us that responsibility to love and to nurture our children. He says, do not provoke them to anger. Um, now, all of us that have parented know that, uh, that, that, that our kids sometimes get angry at us, and it's not necessarily that we provoke them to anger. Uh, my goodness, just giving discipline a child, can, uh, which we should discipline our children, can bring anger. But here, that word provoke uh, means, means not to be antagonistic towards and um, not to be harsh, overly harsh, or to discipline out of anger uh, would be an idea that's there. And so um, I know as a parent, it was difficult sometimes to discipline when we are uh, to not discipline out of anger. Um, but boy, when we're angry and we lose control, there can be a lot of harm and damage that's done. And not just in a physical sense, if, if we spanked our children, but our words uh, can, can, can come harsh and damaging. And many of us have had words spoken to us by our parents that were damaging. I had that situation with my mom. Um, so, uh, here it tells us not to provoke our children to anger, and we can do that regardless of what age our children are. Uh, this doesn't just address children as their, as their minors, but throughout their adult life as well. And I've counseled many families in different situations. And very often when I'm counseling an adult, uh, it comes out in counseling that there is a wound or a hurt that ha was done in the past by a parent or is continuing on where parents still try to control their children as they're adults. So this is a means of provoking to anger. And so we need to examine the way that we parent, whether our children are small or whether they're old. And we need to, to, to relate to them in the same manners that we would anybody else where scriptures command us, particularly in the New Testament, to exercise the one another's, uh, love one another, uh, be gentle with one another, encourage one another. These are the things that, that only by the Spirit of God can we parent out of. And so... 
I would I would sum it up by saying this that um, that as as children either adult children or minor children and as parents whether our children are minor or adult that we need to operate in those relationships with each other according to the Spirit of God, bearing the fruit of the Spirit in our lives and exercising all of the one another's that we find in the New Testament within those family relationships. And I know it, 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 uh, it is not always easy. We understand that. We're, we're, we're falling, fallen human beings and we don't always operate that way. But if that's our prayer and our desire, God will work in our hearts to change our hearts so that we do practice the one another's with each other. Um, I would encourage you that that today, if there's a wound from the past from your parent or if there's a, a wound from the present with your parent, that you take that to the Lord and allow God to do that healing. And if you have wounded a child, whether they're little or they're an adult, and if you recognize that, I would encourage you to take the first step and go to your your child. Uh, again, whether they're a child or whether they are an adult child, acknowledge your sin, acknowledge your fault to them, and ask for forgiveness. And they may not be ready to extend it at that moment, but you've done all that you can do to be at peace with all people. Um, jokingly, but serious at the same time, tell my kids and have told them a few times that I know as a parent, I, I made some mistakes. I know that I've messed them up in some way. Um, and when they recognize that, when they need to go to counseling, I'll pay for their counseling because I acknowledge that I've not been a perfect parent. We None of us have been a perfect parent. Um, but there's something liberating in, in, in the sense of confessing our sins one to another so that we might be healed, James tells us in his letter. So I pray today that the Holy Spirit will use this word, that you'll meditate, go to the Lord, ask the Lord, Lord, is there anything that I need to get reconciled here? And by God's power and his ability in our lives to be able to extend that forgiveness or receive that forgiveness in Jesus' name. I pray the Lord blesses you and keeps you today. I pray that you we, we have an opportunity to plant a seed of the gospel in somebody's heart. And if we recognize that a seed's been planted there, that we are able to discern that. And by God's uh, empowerment, that he give us the words to be able to cultivate that seed. Or if we have an opportunity to share Christ with somebody and, and witness God save them, may God do that. Well, I pray you have a blessed holiday weekend if you're in town and you're going to be in service this weekend. I look forward to worshiping with you this coming Sunday. Um, and if you are away, remember you can watch online and join us in that way. I love you. I pray the Lord's blessings on you that he keep you today. Have a great day. God bless you.